Pikachu! Yeah, so Ross, players, I know Ross is playing Blastoise. Um, looks like John is going to mulligan once. The glare on uh, his, the sleeve on his active makes it look like the uh, Play Pokemon logo guy is like deformed. It makes it look like it's a, like a Pokemon, like a little <laughs> like Manchino or something. <laughs> so yeah, Ross, uh, five... Five zero one with Blastoise, John Schweppy. Uh, did you see what he was mulliganing? I couldn't. I couldn't quite see. Oh, I need to get the timer. <clears throat> okay, I'm not gonna know how hard could it be, right? Yeah. It's fine. You can just like leave that and just get started on the timer. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. It's, you just just press start here. It's up on there. Oh. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> did it like freeze? Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Alright, uh, we're having some trouble with the timer. I can just set one on my phone, I suppose. And just keep you guys updated, like, verbally on how we're doing on time. And it's not the worst idea. the match, it looks like uh, John is going to go first. He's playing, is he playing a straight Darkrai build or some kind of Darkrai. Ross opens Lone Keldeo across from two Darkrais and two Sableyes. Uh, a la laser dice fall off the table, but... We're going to have a laser, and I believe that's a head from the Kelio, and then an N. So how, how do you feel about this matchup in general? Assuming that this is just a straight Dark Ray deck, like the Sosa deck. Straight Dark Ray against Blastoise? Yeah. I think it's very favorable for Blastoise. Not very favorable, but like I definitely think it's a pretty good matchup for Blastoise. Um, it's just really, really hard for... If a deck can take two one-hit KOs against Dark Ray in a row, like on Dark Rise, then there's, it's, there's really no way a Dark Ray can come back. Not no way, I mean, I, I hate to say never, but... Right, right. No, I, I, I mean, I think, I think we've proven that's a story. Dark Eye thrives on exchanges. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so hopefully, I mean, going second's not the best for Ross, but... Uh, and looks like uh, John's going to be able to junk hunt some good stuff back. Yeah, John had a relatively good start from what I can see. <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, I don't know what's in his hand, but if he has some, maybe an Ultra Ball... Oh, he, doesn't, yeah, have very good, he doesn't have very good junk hunt targets, so maybe I spoke too soon. Yeah, but still... It's still, you know, pretty close to what you want to be doing, just like lasering, junk hunting. Looks like, he, like he's confused, right? With oh, the dark cloud. Oh, he is confused, right? Spooky. spooky. That's actually uh, really relevant because now a dark <laughs> eye with a dark claw and a laser can do 140 to the Keldeo and knock it out. Right, right. So, put some so that 30 damage 30 is damage on there. pretty cool. Hope, I hope they're using the white dice that we provided. Yes. Nice. Good job, Russ. Uh, it's 40 because of the poison. Right. You knew we could count on Russ. Yeah, he's been on stream before. All right, so Black Kieran from Ross. Uh, we apologize. We should try and change that uh, angle of the camera later. No, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, but we should just physically move the camera later when uh, so there's a little bit less glare. And it looks like Ross is gonna uh, no, juniper thing. away. A beach of juniper. Um, an energy retrieval. Don't mess with stuff. Just leave it alone. And um, I doesn't look like he has a Squirtle. I'm not quite sure. Um, I, obviously, we talked about this a lot, but the ideal start for this deck is just as many squirrels as possible. A beach on turn one. Ross has some of that. He drops a Squirtle. Um, Ross, for those who don't know, very good player. Because um, the only player to qualify for Worlds every year, uh, so even since 2002, back in the um, Wizards of the Coast days, um, he's got second at Worlds twice, uh, losing... Um, to Jeremy Marin in 2005, and then David Cohen in 2011. Um, exceptionally, stop it, please, Mike. It's fine. <laughs> exceptionally great player. Um, here with a 501 record today. Wins this match, and he should be able to double draw it in. Um, he's also safe to win one, and then we'll see what happens. So, he's if he, if he crosses this hurdle here, he should be good for at least day two finish. <clears throat> and it looks like Ross is. Just beach? I think he might have. I think Ross pooped. Oh no, he drops it. It's getting his water bottle. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he has five on it, so we just pass the turn. We have a, a um, dark energy attachment on the dark guy. So he's playing Absols, which is a little bit different than the classic like Soso list. Doesn't make a huge difference in the Blastoise matchup unless he can put Ross in position where he's like forced to black ballista and Absol. But right. Player's gonna play an end. Shuffle their decks a bit. <laughs> Sorry for my uh, sniffles, guys. So, fortunately, we didn't see... I mean, Ross got... Uh, besides having a second Squirtle, Ross got a pretty ideal start. We didn't see it. We didn't see the same thing on the other side from John. Uh, 
I mean, he, he had a confused ray for 30, whatever. He could have done credit for the uh, laser, but really what you want to see on turn one in the dark ray deck is some ultra balls, just carrying some dark, some dark patches, you know, just kind of get that going. He, it doesn't, unless he does exceptionally well off of this, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to get a turn two Night Spear. Um, going first also sort of mitigates the, um, like, a turn two Night Spear going first is, like, unstoppable, but right. a turn three Night Spear going first is, like, not all that bad, I think. Right. Like, Against an evolution deck, whether you go first or second is like adding a whole extra turn to like exactly, yeah. the, the exchange. Yeah, definitely. And that's one of the things like I think that's why part of my dark race so powerful is because it doesn't, like it can just come from out of nowhere. And similarly to plasma, in that way, and just another we see another um, confuse ray. And Ross has a tool scrapper in hand. Maybe a beach, a water. It doesn't really have a whole lot going on. I don't think he has a way to get a blast choice this turn. Can't quite see his full hand, unfortunately. Uh, I, I agree that blast choice is favored in this matchup, though. Uh, what do you think of blast choice overall? Like, I know that a lot of people have been talking about how it's... I, I personally think it's the best deck, but I know some people have uh, not really agreed with that sentiment. It doesn't really seem to <laughs> get up a lot of steam. It's just, it's so difficult to counter. And I don't think there are any decks that have a favorable Blastoise matchup, which is just incredible to think about. Like, it's not that it can't be beaten. There are a lot of decks that have like 50-50 matchups against it, but I would be willing to say that there aren't a whole lot of decks that can beat Blastoise, among other things, unless you're like directly countering it. Right. Like that uh, Leafeon, like Stunfisk Flareon deck that uh, Tyler played in Vancouver might be the closest, but even that like has to give up strengths and other matchups just to yeah. deal with Blastoise. Yeah, definitely. We saw Tyler get 2-0'd uh, by Big Basics and that might just like, he just, you can't win against Big Basics in there. And I agree. I think Blastoise is all around the most powerful deck. We've talked about it a lot on stream in the past couple weeks, but just the ability to do 200 every turn or every other turn is just insane. It's just Absolutely. something that you... Uh, you know, it's, it sounds weird to say this, I guess, but I feel like in a lot of ways Blastoise is the safest play, just because at the end of the day you're going to do 200. You know what I mean? The Big Basics decks, like Oh, if I, you run into a bunch of counters or you run into, like, a bunch of Blastoise or whatever, you know what I mean? You're going to lose. And, like, Dark Ride's really good, but not if you get a slow start. But, you know, Blastoise is, like, I've seen games where Blastoise is just does nothing for several, several turns. And then eventually he's just able to go over Candy, Blastoise, Black Ballista, Black Ballista, Black Ballista. For sure. I can see another end here. <clears throat> One of Blastoise's strengths is that its board position can be really commanding. Like, there are a lot of times where... You like if Blastoise has one prize left, you probably lose because you can't send anything up that they can't knock out. Um, right. So like, there's just things like that. Like, I have lost a lot more games to Blastoise where I've been backed into a corner rather than there's just been like a. I don't think I've ever lost to Blastoise and not seen it coming at least a turn or two in advance. Like it's it's very good at just like backing into a corner essentially. Right. I definitely agree with that. So. So Ross plays an end, hoping for a Blastoise's turn. I for sure. Which I think, since neither of them have been having like super fast starts, that it's still anybody's game for sure. Like anybody who can like pick up some steam in these next turns or two, next couple turns will oh, be likely to come out ahead. And Ross, I think if Ross can black ballista before that Keldeo dies, he's probably fine. But that also is like a pretty tall order. And we're not really sure. We've been seeing a lot of different. Um, attacker counts, like a lot of people are playing one black hero, a lot of people are playing three. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that would make a very big difference in this matchup, and we have no real way of knowing um, what Ross plays yet. Uh, from what I can tell, or from, from speaking to Ross, I think he just plays a pretty standard, like, 2-2 two, two of each. Or I know it's definitely, it might be, uh, like, 3-2 of each. He played right? three Keldeo, two black hero at the Klesinski Open, so okay, yeah, sure he, how much his list has changed since he, he told me his list has changed a few cards. I know that he does not play the, like, uh, slim black hero with, like, the one lightning or whatever. I know that much. So that'll be pretty relevant. <clears throat> yeah. So he's going to drop a Keldeo and rush in. He's going to try and save that Keldeo for now. And again, you know, Ross, uh, it's what, turn three now, and Ross doesn't have anything going on, but either does John, really. Like, he, has, he has damage on that Keldeo. Like, he set that Keldeo up for a Night Spear later. If you, uh, if I came into this game and you told me that both of their turn ones had just happened, you'd still probably say it was anybody's game. Like, if they oh, both definitely. don't. It's not even that they're terrible starts, but they just, ha not, not, not much has happened. Right, no, definitely. We see a Juniper. Um, he did discard Dark Energy and a Dark Patch, I believe. So if he gets a Dark Patch, you can get a nice pair this turn if he wants. I, I don't think he discarded a Dark with the Juniper. I could be wrong. Uh, I, I, I just, I, mean, I, I thought he did, but we'll see, I guess. Yeah, only one <clears> way to find out. Yeah, yeah, Dark Patch, so. Shut up. <laughs> he does have the Dark Patch, so if he wants to, he can definitely knock out that Keldeo. Um, does the Keldeo have enough on it to get sniped? 
Or no, it only has 90. So if you if you have a catcher here, what do you think you just kill the Kelly and take two prizes, or do you think you go for the Squirtles, or what are um, you doing, John? Did Ross ended his turn at the beach? I'm assuming. Yes. So the odds of Ross having a black or a Blastoise <laughs> ready to go are pretty high. So I don't think killing a Squirtle is horrible, but just leaving him with one on board and that huge hand, there's a very good chance he could get it anyway, and then you just put yourself at odd prizes for nothing. I'd right. probably go after the Keldeo. Alright, take, take just two to prizes. Try to, and... Yeah. If Ross doesn't... I wouldn't even hate. Going after the black Kyurem. So he he just oh doesn't have a catch which, or anything. Which that's uh, Night Spear is one ten and thirty on the black Kyurem. I think being able to catch the black Kyurem there actually would have been pretty good. Because then I can see that he <clears throat> well, that doesn't have any energy on it. If the black Kyurem had a lightning, I know that's like way too hypothetical, and I'm just ignoring the game state at that point. But I think what he did here is fine. Like he's got two EXs that are within Night Spear range. It sucks that he hasn't. Like the one hundred and forty don't line up. The hundred and forty from like Dark Claw Laser and then a thirty <laughs> snipe is really, really potent and especially in the Dark Knight or in the Blastoise matchup because you kinda need to take a double knockout because they take prizes so much faster than you. All I right. think uh, not to foreshadow too much since it is still pretty early in the game, but I think the fact that neither of those Keldeos could realistically get to one forty <laughs> at any point, um, might be pretty relevant. The Kelly didn't get to one. This the the active Kelly didn't get to one forty off of a bench snipe. You know what I mean? Like two bench snipes, right? And that's at one ten. Oh, he's at one ten. All right. Yeah, okay, that changes a lot. Point. Yeah. So now he could be in relatively good so shape. He, he he can catch her the bench Keldeo and knock. Yeah. So one more night spear right? and then he snipes this Keldeo that's active and then he can kill two Keldeos at once. Yeah. So if that night spear, if the night spear in question, if he's able to night spear any black Kyurem, put thirty on the Keldeo with one ten, putting that Keldeo at one forty, then um, one more Night Spear, and then he can snipe that Keldeo, take four prizes, and then he just needs a catcher to kill the last one. That's also assuming he's not just getting Black Bullets. I mean, he can also just catch the bench one and kill them both. It, sure, doesn't, sure. it doesn't hurt the Black I just, feel like, I just think killing the Black Kyurem oh, is I, 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 totally agree. I think I don't think Keldeo is a huge threat, and he should prioritize getting rid of the Black Kyurem. And like, oh, I guess what we're just getting at the point is that uh, Night Spear is insane. Like, just being able, to put, being able to put the 30 anywhere besides yeah. the Squirtle is just like, it's going to add up. You know, it's one of those things Absolutely. where you can Darker eye hatch, dark patch, dark patch, and just come back immensely. And it doesn't. Uh, Ross callers for eight, but it doesn't look like he has the the uh, uh, blast toy. So he doesn't have a decent way to. Um, doesn't have a fast way to get it out. At least Ross doing some counting. I, w I wish we had timer for this game. We apologize for that chase. We our, do have one on my phone. Our technical boy went to give. Uh... There are thirty-seven minutes and thirty-five seconds left. Okay. So actually, just to note, I mean, we have, keep talking about how not much has happened in this game, and how we're not really seeing a whole lot of action yet, and things are just starting to pick up, and they're already 12 and a half minutes in. Right. So I can already tell time will probably be a factor here. Definitely. Side of the players, last call for round two. We're going to start in one minute. And the rare candy in the blaster, so Ross does have it. I don't know... What else he has in his hand? I see a black here in his hand. I think he's about to deluge some energy onto the board. I'm not quite sure. He's going to rush in with that uh, Keldeo with 90 on it. Retreat. And it looks like he is going to get a black ballista this turn. That yeah. is not a good thing. He's going to empty his hand to do it. He has a black here in hand um, left. But that just it wipes all the energy off of... Uh, off of John's board, besides the one on the Sableye, so that's going to be huge. Again, we we just are like, oh, not they're not like again. This is just how Blastoise works. Oh, they're not doing much. Two hundred, you know what I mean? And it's probably um, just going to keep repeating from here. Like Ross did go down <laughs> to a single Black Kierman hand, and he took two prizes. So we don't know what's in his hand. He could just dead drop from here. But either way, it's going to take again. It's going to take an exceptionally good turn for John to get a Night Spear, or even get close to one. So he, I mean, it says we did rule out. Absol? How much? Uh, Absol's not even doing that much right now, yeah. yeah. If he is able to... Actually, if he, he can put the Black Kyurem at 140 right now. Can he? Uh, one, two... Yes, with the claw. So that's definitely something to... Or he can... Oh, Black one, Kyurem has 180. Does it put him at 150? 150, though, yeah. Yeah, it puts the Black Kyurem at 150. Four, six, eight, ten, and so that way, John just needs a Night Spear three times before Ross can Black Ballista twice. But even that still is... Still a tall order. Still right, tall exactly. Order. And Ross, or John just end, which is... I mean, 
obviously he'd have no way of knowing, but that's actually pretty bad for him since Ross's hand was less than stellar. And obviously, um, uh, a laser here along with a Verbank and the uh, Absol will knock out the Black Kyrim. Which could be huge. I think that's why Ross kept the Black... We, we saw Ross discard a Juniper with a Super Energy Shield keeping the Black Kyrim just because I think that he... Anticipated. Um, yeah, and anticipated also that, like, an end might be played, you know, like, what? who, who knows what's going to happen. And, we, I mean, it's just... We, uh, John has Dark Energy in the discard pile. All he needs is the Dark Patch... And either way, even if he doesn't get it, it's safe to say that he's going to have one next turn because he has a Sableye. Mm -hmm. So it's like both decks are moving incredibly fast. So the bad thing that could happen, though, is just that, you know, John passes, or uh, John Concier gets the Dark Patch, two Dark Patches back, a Dark Patch and a laser, or whatever. And then Rosh just ends him, and then Catcher kills the Dark Rush. And, that, yeah. like that. and that's essentially just the game. Absolutely. I would definitely think it would be if. Yeah, if Ross, if John loses a Dark Eye next turn, I think it'd be in his best interest to concede, just because time is going to be such a concern. They've been playing for just over 15 minutes now. Yeah. Well, what we could see, too, is... Um, who do you think is... Uh, which which deck do you think is favored in just in the matchup in general? Game? Oh, in shorter games. Um, probably Blastoise. Okay. Um, just if... Blastoise at its best against Darkrai at its best. Darkrai is all, has to be a lot more methodical. Like Junk Hunt is kind of necessary, even if you're going like aggressive, so to speak. But a turn two, like a turn two or three Black Ballista, if you just follow that up, you can win in the first five turns of the game. Definitely. So an aggro Blastoise definitely wins a faster game than even the most aggro Darkrai. And we see a lot think. of. We hear a lot of talk about the um, the draws and everything, and uh, game three not finishing. But one thing that we I've seen a little bit on the stream in the past few weeks is a 1-0 victory. So it's like very possible here that, um, not so much in this particular game, because it looks like Ross is pretty far ahead, but we saw this in round one of Vancouver Regionals where it was actually it was Ross playing Blastoise, and he won a game one, but it was pretty long drawn out, and then game two just didn't finish, and so the player mm -hmm. who won game one wins. So that's it actually happened to me um, today. Oh, today? Oh, yep. uh, yeah. And it's a very, <clears throat> I wouldn't say common, but it's a very possible outcome. For sure. And that actually is a pretty good argument for 50-minute best of three, because... People who prefer best of one, like that's what you get if right. you can't finish more than one game. It has been said that like Pokemon's view on it is that they want to have one good game. Like that's the idea. I I, I don't know if I necessarily think that's correct. Like not, not not that they don't think that, but that that like opinion is correct or whatever. But um, that's is like their thought or at least what's what like judges and other people in the know have said. Um, so like I just Ross think what they fail to realize with that is that a bad game can be drawn out. And then that right. could just result in a tie that should have been a win, or vice versa. Right. So Ross is going to get another Black Ballista this turn. Uh, it, although it's not... Oh, okay, so I assume he doesn't... He's just going to go to kill the save Black. Oh, yeah, I would imagine yeah. he's going to catch Superior energy retrieval, man. Letting... Decent. It's so good. <laughs> so... The Both mine. of his Keldeos have a pretty big amount of damage, but I do I like that he attacked with the Keldeo with more damage on it, just to oh definitely. I mean, he wants his energy in the discard the pile snipes. now. You know what I mean? It's, they, they, well, they, I'm not necessarily saying that that Keldeo is easy, easier to kill. I'm just saying that John benefits a lot from sniping, oh, the, the, snipe, sniping the Keldeo like with 110, right, but sniping right. a Keldeo with 90 isn't nearly as good. Yeah. Right, wait, no, it's identical. Never mind. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it takes. It's, it's, it's it, a turn he could. Yep. Yeah, okay. I was right the first time. I should have just stopped talking. Couldn't be identical. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna see double dark patch. Not right? bad. He did attach though to the. Uh, did the uh, Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I should probably cover my microphone when I clear my throat. That's okay. <laughs> and. Uh, I'll tell you that story later. No, you won't. So you see a catcher from John. And I think knocking out this black Kyrum could be pretty good. <laughs> it's going to be pretty good. He's I a, don't know why I'm uh, even trying to do this. Eight, nine, the odd prize issue for Ross is mitigated. Like forcing, if Ross were at four prizes right now, killing this black Kyrum would be <clears> far better because he'd have to, Ross would have to answer the Absol, putting himself at odd prizes. But right. now Ross can just secret sword the Absol and then... He's essentially back to where he was, really. Like he's down lightning energy, he's down black harem, he's down. Uh, he's going to have two more prizes. But if this happens, which it might not, he still needs a laser. But um, actually, 
This sorry, doesn't he's look only too bad. Firing out the laser. Oh yeah, okay, I didn't. But it's it's essentially the same thing, right? Like, right. It, it's just kind of resetting where it was because we're going to send up that Keldeo, knock it out, and then he is he is behind the the lightning, which is relevant, but it's not the worst thing that could be happening. To I Rock think Ross right just now. needs to be able to black ballista again. <clears throat> He's not going to be able to win with Secret Swords because his oh, not Keldeos are so heavily damaged. And so it, Ross's hand is probably going to decide this game, honestly. like I think his hand here will decide the game. Because if Ross knocks out the Absol with this Keldeo, John can obviously very easily answer it with a Darkrai. But if Ross responds to that Darkrai, he wins. So he promotes the Blastoise, which is actually something that really bugs me about Blastoise players, is after a knockout, they promote Keldeo, mm -hmm. which very, very, very rarely will be relevant. but Keldeo has an ability where you can just make him active whenever you want. So why limit yourself exactly, by making right. him active from the get-go? I, I like I've never promoted a Blastoise at the beginning of my turn and then like passed with an active and been really glad that I did. But I've always been really smug about thinking about it. So people should be more like me, basically. No, definitely sucks to not be me. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm the best. I, I wish I was you every day. Same. I mean, uh, sm small edges are relevant. You know what I mean? For you sure. Gotta, uh, it's, I mean, especially when you consider a matchup. 50 50 or you think the game's really luck based like it is those small things that mm -hmm. really and i think the there's difference. just a million things like that that ross does and that's what makes him such a great player some would say the greatest i love ross the truth is out there <laughs> <Feel sweet. laughs> uh so he's gonna do it for a way superior Bummer. Yeah, he just he needs to dig for the black harem at this point i think he just realizes that yeah he definitely needs to dig for the black harem superior is not going to really help him anyway with all those waters on the uh Keldeo. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I see a spear here. I see a colorist. I see a rare candy. Uh, is it a black carom? I We're looking at the same card. Nope. No. What is that? It looks like a full art N. Yeah, it could be. Energy search. Uh, I don't see a black carom in the deck. If you're just joining us, um, we are t about 30 minutes in, 31 minutes, 31 and a half minutes into um, round six. Seven at Fort Wayne Regionals. This game is Ross one. Coffin versus John Schwepp, and they are about halfway through game one. So this is taking quite a yeah, quite this a long has time. Been a pretty long it game. could very easily devolve into whoever wins this gets a one-zero -oh victory. Um, again, I'm Kenny Wisdom. This is Mike Newman. What up, girl? We're on the bubble, presented by Top Cut Central. If you like what you're saying, if you don't like what you're saying, and Woo! want to help support, and there's the black here. He did have the black here, so that um, um, if he's able to. Attack with it. Um, no, that's gonna be good. I say the most obvious things. Yeah, he, he, he does. The, we saw that he has the uh, uh, retrieval in hand, but or superior in hand. But I don't know if he has the energy in the discard pile yet. He could retreat though. Exactly. Which is which is going yep. to happen? Yeah. I didn't see the water on the black here. Oh no, he's just gonna secret sword. Yeah, he doesn't need to. Like right, you can just take it with right. You know, exactly. And so, it. and now it's just kind of sketchy because John is like he just telegraphed that he's just gonna answer with the black ballista as soon as John Knight spears, but. It doesn't. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I don't think John can do and, anything about and, it. I mean, an end here would hurt for sure. An end here is definitely like what, like it's Blast was weakness, right? Like it's for what sure. he, they need. They need cards to win, and like superior energy retrieval, retrieval made the deck so much better. But then it also is three cards you need. Absolutely. So I definitely. It doesn't look like John has an end. I think he would have been really eager to play it if he did. I'm not sure how much more thinking he has to do. I mean, obviously. We are talking about the cards that we're looking at, and he has a lot more information than we do. Right. Um, but it seems like he just needs to kill. Oh, I really, really like that he's killing the Keldeo without yeah, the energy. I agree. Um, I agree. Assuming, wait, does Ross have energy in the discard? I don't think he has enough. Like, I, I think, I think he has like a lightning in there. But I, I he def, I, I'm almost 100 sure he doesn't have enough to black ballista. Just to respond to some of what I'm seeing in the chat, um, a long game one really actually really really favors just the winner of game one, just because as if time gets called during game two, it doesn't matter. Like the prize count doesn't matter. John could have one left and Ross could have six left, so that's why um, best of thirty minutes, or fifty minutes, best of three can actually really really benefit slow players and as long as they just win their first. Ross game. is known for being a more a slow deliberate player. I think some of those uh, allegations are a little bit for sure um, over exaggerated, but he does play slower than most players, and that's. Something that, uh, in a roundabout way, does better for him. He's definitely not. He's definitely not stalling. He's not slow playing. But Absolutely. winning a slow game one, as, as bad as it is to say, like is. But winning a slow right. game one in single game Swiss, you deserve to win. Fine so too, yeah, yeah, I absolutely exactly. think that winning a long game one, it, if it was long, that means it was like if it was that long. Exactly. That means so we're seeing a dowsing machine here. I didn't see what he got back. Yeah, and again, like yeah, uh, obviously, um, it. 
all Ross has to do to get energy into the discard is retreat the Keldeo. We thought of that, and surely he will. But I do like John. Just another really, really small thing that'll matter one time out of a million. He just wants to force Ross to think of that. Like, yeah, so and he has the end here. So and yeah, the end's huge. And that's, I mean, that's what I really, I, that's what he must have dowsing for. Sorry, I took my, uh, took my eyes off the screen. But so now Ross has to, one of these three things has to be a superior. And he can't, um, I mean, it'll also be a Juniper, it'll also be other cards to draw. But he needs, he needs to be able to either draw more cards or one of these to be superior. Keeping in mind that there is a beach out, a beach in play. Um, so John needs to, I don't. I don't even think the end is that big because Ross has a turn to spare. Oh no, he doesn't. Nope. Ross yeah, is losing an EX yeah. this turn, and yeah. then he'll lose one next turn. So yeah. he, it's those two cards will determine the winner of this game. Ross with the old no look, love it. That's super tense. Okay. Which also just shows how confident he is that he knows he doesn't need the extra time to look at those cards. Okay. Like I think he's thinking the same thing we are that it's just going to determine the winner. Looks like Ross I would just assume he doesn't have it. I think he'd do something if he did. Tap the top of the deck with the Super Energy Retrieval. Let me see it. I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear from looking through his deck that he doesn't, uh, he doesn't have the energy. That Keldeo dies to a snipe too, which is huge. Exactly. Yeah. He doesn't it's, even it's need like a any night spirit. I'm dies. sorry. Sorry. I'm um very. I have very, very, very poor vision. So dice. Uh, any struggle? I see a with the dice. I think I see a, like a rare candy and a blue card. So probably like a blast voice or so. It looks like he just doesn't have it. Um, he could catch with the dark eye and hope John doesn't have an energy in his giant hand. Yeah, I, uh, sucks for Ross. You see, Ross is like considering every every possible outcome. Doesn't want to scoop too soon, especially when we said how important game. But that's game also, game I mean, I I'm surprised that he hasn't conceded yet. You think because yeah. just he knows that now John has won the long game one and has right. a huge advantage. I mean, in fairness, I don't think that like 10 seconds of extra thinking is going to matter. But, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I don't know. Well, 10 seconds is the difference between if you're going to be turn one or turn zero. Yeah. You know how to update the thing? Yeah. After you save it with the switch. So, John Schweppy taking game one. <clears throat> over Ross Cawthon, I swear that's how you pronounce his name. Game count. Yeah, just a one yeah. by John. Oh, okay, never mind. Periodically mentioned that John won game one. So moving into a game two here, we have about what twenty minutes left, something like that. Again, we'll have for the rest of the rounds, uh, we'll have the clock on the screen, but we had some technical delays today. Technical um, delays being Chase went to go get food, and I don't know how to use a computer. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, John leads one game. So, uh, other looking over the crowd, I don't see any bigger name players. I see Dustin still playing. Uh, I see Colin Mall still playing. I don't see Kyle Puka anywhere. Uh, but there is an empty seat. That's great top table. At so these, uh, finish there. like, sort of at the cusp of the top tables, like, single digits and, like, low teens. I'm seeing a lot of, like, not necessarily big name players, but just relatively well known. Like, definitely people with um, big tournament showings before that I could definitely see going deep. We've got Stephen Clark playing against Tyler Keller, both of whom, um, Tyler Keller uh, got top four at Fall Regionals, Indiana Fall Regionals last year. Um, Stephen Clark has had a lot of success at States and Regionals. Um, we've got Justin Phillips playing Shane Passmore. Jack Eiler playing somebody I can't recognize from behind. Two people I don't know. And Chris Calvert playing against uh, Michael Kendall. Yeah. Oh no! I see Kyle now. So Kyle's not that blank seat. He's he's just down a little bit further. So all the all the big name players can still be playing well up at you as they go. Um, and hopefully Kyle Lesnowicz and Tracy Key are playing, which is actually pretty funny. Um, both of them are pretty well known and very 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 skilled players that have kind of dropped from the game recently and made surprise appearances here. So it's good to see them not only playing but at the top tables. And so this is a. Uh... Um, <laughs> bad, a bad place to be for Ross because now there's probably 20 minutes left in the game, and I mean let's face it, a blast, a blast versus dark ray, it's gonna take what at the very least 10 minutes if both players play quickly. Yeah, there's 21 minutes left, so if this, I mean this game, even if Ross wins, could very easily take 15 minutes, and that's essentially. And Ross is Ross. playing really fast. You can already see it. Yeah. So he knows. I mean, they're both players are wearing watches. I expect time to be. Oh, and we're seeing John check his watch now. So I definitely expect time to be pretty relevant here. So I guess there's a there's a possibility that this game finishes Ross wins in ten minutes and then they have a, another quick game three, but I just don't I just don't think you can stream. Yeah, I think I think Ross three. is playing for a draw at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Which is again as we went over in the break if you were watching, is 
a fine and it's yeah. not that it gets rocked. It's not. It's not the end of the It's not the end of his day. Um, however, a draw. Um, yeah, it keep, keeps him in day. It keeps him in for day two. He's still still very alive. We'll have two more rounds left, and he'll have to um, win and then draw, or just win win, of course. But he can't afford a loss if he does that. <clears throat> So Ross is Skyling. Um, I'm not sure what's in his hand. Is he an energy? I think he's a rare candy. So if he can get like a Squirtle and a Beach into play, so he's gonna Skyla for a level ball for a Squirtle. Uh, Darkrai did win the first game. <clears throat> and Ross doing some shuffling. Uh, I see a rare candy in Ross's hand. And some energy and some trainers. I can see what they really are. I'm gonna attach the water to Keldeo. And he's just gonna pass the turn. No beach, unfortunately. Uh, gonna see a laser out of John, which is a heads again, which, as we saw last game, that was. Pretty relevant, all that laser damage and not being able to rush in and fix it can add up. And just even the initial 30 or 60, depending on what John does here, can add up. Yeah. And just something to note with records while there is a little bit of downtime during the game. Um, a 6-0-3 and three record is guaranteed to make day two. That's exactly 21 match points, but a 6-1-2 and two will not. So... Whichever player, uh, if they draw here, they are both they both have very good odds at still making it in. But if uh, it does end up in a win and loss situation, the losing player will absolutely have to win um, their last game. Yeah. And they, they have to win 2-0. They have to go 2-0. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, but um, any player who wins seven games, no matter where their other two games fall, whether they be 7-2, and 7-0-2, and or 7-1-1, and one, any player who wins seven games or more is guaranteed to make day two. The and the way it happens is that if uh, whoever loses this game or draws cannot afford another loss. Like, uh, yeah, exactly. even at a, even at a draw, if Ross goes yeah, five, even at two, a draw, neither to, of them. He has to go win draw. Same Ross. thing with John. Yep, so. six one two will not make cut or will not make day two. Excuse In fairness, I think day two cuts the top thirty two. So six, uh, so less than twenty one match points will still make prizes. I think because like some kind yeah. of some amount of kicker points and like I think like uh, pretty like almost half a box something like that. So the prize, yeah, um, the prizes are. Obviously, not really what you want. You want to be, you know, making data. You want to be top eight. You want to be winning the event. You want to be getting but hundreds of points. I don't expect people to drop as soon as they're out of cut, just because you're bound to get your twenty dollars worth if you have a decent showing. Oh, definitely. And once you make day two, you've guaranteed yourself, like I think, a box or like close to a box, as well wow. as like a decent amount of points. Yeah, that's awesome. I think it's actually a box for top sixteen, so it's probably like twenty something packs for top thirty two. But still, like you're definitely rewarded for showing up. So we haven't missed a whole lot. Um, Ross gets. I'm assuming a turn two Blastoise. I admittedly. Have not been watching all that closely. No, he gets a, he he got a blast race out, um, or he evolved into. I'm just not sure if this is his sec is this his third turn or second. Uh, this is his second turn. I believe. Okay, so he's got a turn two secret sword doing 110, which is pretty strong. Hi, Wheeler. And Clark's. Uh, there is not. Done, there's not a match point calculator. Table. Um, I've looked online a little bit because I'm Hi, bad Wheeler. at math and trying to do it. But um, Sam Chen, teammate of Ross, is actually and um, Truth is out there. We've been talking. Uh, and he has informed me that Fizzy Stardust, bless his heart. Someone asked for a, a calculator, and Fizzy says, "I think wins are three points, uh, draws are one." Um, thirty, thirty-five. Uh, from what Sam Chen tells me, and he was not wrong last time. He hasn't been wrong yet. Thirty-five was on the cusp last time we saw a player on the cusp. Uh, one miss, and then the rest make it in. So there was like four X amount of points, and then the guy who got the same amount of points miss on resistance. But thirty-six should be in. So anything above 36 is fine. 35 is on the edge, on the bubble. So you're looking for 36. Okay. And uh, to answer your question, tomorrow is not just top cut, but it is day two. It's not just regular Swiss. There will only be sure. only certain people will advance to play yeah. five more rounds of Swiss before top eight. It is legit to ID. Yes, right? IDs legal. are completely legal. So actually, in... <clears throat> no, an ID here is not a good idea at all. Like, no, no. I mean, obviously not, yeah, yeah. Sure, but... Is there ever any reason to ID before the last round of a tournament? Or... Um, it depends on the attendance. Like, I, I know a lot of the seniors' tournaments. Like, uh, for Cali, uh, Ian Whiten, a good friend of mine, uh, he went 4-0-2. Like, he went 4-0 and then drew twice. And then ID twice. Yeah, it just depends on the numbers and how it works out. Sure. 
And obviously, like, like drawing, for those of you who aren't familiar, obviously, it's intentional drawing, which is where you agree, um, is it's 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 kind of a a risk where you're saying like. I, I can get more points for winning for myself in a better position, but if I lose, I'll be out. So I'm just gonna draw and take the safe road. Like, uh, you know, maybe maybe I, maybe I am giving myself an outside shot to top eight, but I would rather give myself a good shot to top sixteen. You know what I mean? And just be out. Colin Mall uh, wins his round. So good looking. Advancing Ugh. to six zero oh, and one. So Colin, if he can get two draws here, we'll be in the top eight. If he can win one more match, we'll be in day two. So he's very likely, very likely in. But with his big basics Garbodor deck. Russ and John are in game two. Um, John won game one. A long game one too, so I don't I about fifteen minutes. We're left. definitely not expecting a game three. Yeah, we're keeping time. Um So we see John sorry, we've been talking about uh, little external things I haven't really been. Fourteen minutes left. Um, and yeah, we're not expecting a game three. And we have a Okay, have a good night. I'm going to do Mind Jack for 60 with the Absol, which is immediately going to get knocked out here. Looks like Ross is making some considerations. And again, uh, we've been talking a lot about draws. If you guys don't care, or you already know this, let us know. But uh, it's something that I know a fair bit about that um, you know, a lot of people out there don't. It's a new system. See so Ross play a beach and then Juniper away a blaster's in a beach, drawing what appears to be a handful of water energies, uh, as well as a Juniper, I believe. Go Ross, someone says in the chat. L Rogue. L Satan. Truth is out there. I think I see, I see a Tool Scrapper, a bunch of water energies, I think a Black Kira, maybe. Not quite sure. <laughs> And I, I know we talked about time a lot. Every stream that I've been on, talked about time a lot and Jaws a lot. And it just, you know, it's just so important to the game right now. And I hope that someone from Pokemon watches these videos. I hope they hear the rumblings. I hope that, uh, I hope that uh, we get some change for the for the regionals coming up. It would really suck to have to deal with this all the time. I think that this. Thanks, dude. I dude think, can I have a bite of that? Yeah. Sweet. I think that this. Uh, System is not the best, and I think it'd be improved. I'm probably going to write an article about that for six prizes in the next couple weeks, so check back there. But my short opinions are uh, I'm looking for probably 60 minutes, but uh, in fairness, uh, I do th my I kind of have a controversial opinion, which is that Pokemon players do tend to play slow. Oh my god. Um, I don't think Mike's eating a Doritos taco. It's all good. Um, I don't necessarily think that every player has to be Henry Pryor, but I think that um, more often than not, uh, players could improve their sp the speed of their play. I uh, see an Esper, uh, OTB's official favorite Gen Gen Six Pokemon. I don't, I could see it being a mascot. I could see it. That doesn't offend anybody, does it? Esper. <laughs> Kenny Mercury. Wish I would have gotten my own taco. Oh, um, so while Kenny eats his half of the taco, uh, it's just me. I'm not nearly as good at the play-by-play -play as he is. So we're seeing a laser here. I don't really see a big attack coming from John this turn, which could be why he's lasering. Oh, has, um, man, this is embarrassing. Has John attached an energy from his hand yet, anybody? Eight person oh, sorry. side events. We have sign ups at the front table. Please come and sign And yeah, John can most definitely um just slow down a little bit here for a win. But we do have there's eleven minutes left, um and we are not very far into this game, so that's very possible. But I can I can tell from the way John is shuffling and moving that he doesn't appear to be trying to play slowly at all. But I think even at a reasonable pace um, he could very well. I mean, there so just came out for ten minutes. There are a lot of decisions in Darkrai. You know, there are a lot. I mean, even just like <laughs> exactly in the board for like there's decisions to make. Like, Which is what I'm saying. Like he is obviously doing his best to maintain a reasonable pace, but even right. at a reasonable pace, Darkrai exactly. He's he's gonna have to stop and think a lot. And this game could most, game could most definitely go to time. Hopefully, regardless. he is made of dark um, patches. I wish he would stop putting his energy on top of his Pokemon. I I think that's just to mark. Oh wait, does he have two energy on top? 
Yeah. Never mind. I thought originally I thought it was to mark that he's attached one this turn, but I see that that's not the case. So he does get the Night Spear knockout on the Keldeo, going down to four prices. Um, and Ross has a candy in hand, a water. I don't. Uh, I'm not Besides sure. Candy. So, I don't think that he has a way to black ballista. At least not in his hand. I don't know if he has a juniper or a or something. Um, there are updated uh, rules for slow play, just to give you a little guys a break from the action. Uh, I, uh, the, the, there's a document that's been posted around the Facebook group, Say Fontaine, all that, that I believe is that the, the official guideline is 15 seconds for a decision. Which um, is absurd. And I think that is just like supposed to be like you play an ultra ball, 15 seconds starts, you know, you, you, th you throw down two waters, 15 seconds restarts, you shoot your deck. And I mean, it's like, now that works, um, it might be 20. There's some... They've, they've been a bit loose in the past with it, but I think that with these new time rolls and everything, they've kind of... I think they've updated them a little bit. And as a judge, um, I uh, had the privilege of judging the KO, and Heidi Craig like taught me a lot about um, how to catch slow play, because that was uh, one of the first big Pokemon tournaments to use best of three in Swiss. And you... It seems like judges are just doing laps up and down, um, but if you actually like keep an eye out, you'll notice that a judge will probably stop at your game for like two to three minutes at least once per round um so the way judges keep an eye on so play it generally takes a few games or a few rounds but we're seeing a huge kill deal yeah sorry to Jesus. interrupt but no way man <laughs> that's gonna you one guys dare me to yell cat stories at the top of my lungs <laughs> <laughs> and that is a <laughs> knockout yeah that's on... nuts <clears throat> crazy that is absolutely bananas Watch, um, watch John just drop his that's one of definitely something we sh should have mentioned sooner um, a, if Blastoise has a good matchup against Darkrai to begin with um, if you're able to take a knockout with a giant Keldeo then it's almost impossible to lose um, like it's, it's just like streaming a Black Ballista but you don't even need a hand um, they can't catch her around it because of Russian like it's just absurd what you can do with a 7 energy Keldeo against Darkrai so I it may be like pretty bold, but I legitimately think Ross has this game strictly because of that seven kill energy kill deal he has active right now. In all in all fairness, too, like the thing, just to go back to slow playing real quick. Last thing we're gonna say yeah, about sure. it is that, uh, yeah, these people can you know like players can slow play. John can certainly slow play here to win the game, but as long as players are in good standing with Pokemon, which they're if they're playing uh, if they're playing a tournament, we're gonna assume that they're good people. There's no reason to assume that they're going to cheat or soft cheat or whatever you want to call it. Um, I wouldn't assume that of anyone unless they have a reputation and none of the people in this whole room do, so we're assuming an honorable tournament. If Obviously, if we saw some blatant slow play, I think we would tell a judge, but we, it hasn't been a problem yet. And hopefully we'll continue not to be a problem throughout the event. Did uh, Israel play Keldeo? Ooh, um, I'm not sure, but if you want to find out, listeners, you can watch the deck tech with Israel um, on youtube.com slash onthebubble. Dude, nice. We totally didn't do that on purpose. It's youtube.com slash onthebubble Pokemon. Yeah, sorry. Um, we actually uh, regret to inform you guys, Kenny has been let go of his position Dude, as commentary. Fired. We wish him the best in his future endeavors. Approx how much time was left? 8... It's 8.32. That doesn't mean anything. Him. There's 7 minutes left. <clears throat> 7 minutes left, so... <laughs> Uh, if this, uh... uh... Keyblade Warrior 2, um, that was an advertisement, so, uh, we're gonna have to ban you from the chat. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't! So, uh... I think, uh, Chase is actually doing it. Alright. Sorry, man. <laughs> and, uh... So, seven minutes left, six minutes left. We could be a, we could be a little off, might be off by as much as a minute, but... Um, I don't... I mean, we have that plus three turns, like, this, this game shouldn't... This game should end before then, which unfortunately is probably going to spell a draw from what I'm seeing. Which is pretty scary. Um, just being in a position where you absolutely have to win your last round is always stressful. Absolutely. Especially given 5-0-1. and and Like, the fact that they have not lost a game and we, they're six rounds in. If they draw here, they'll be seven rounds in. Neither of them will have lost a game and they're not guaranteed day two. And that's no. pretty scary. It's funny, Ross... Um, Ross uh, <laughs> remarked to me in Vancouver. I, I came over to him and said, "Hey, how'd you do?" And he said, "Oh, I, uh, I, uh, um, he's a, he's a yeah, I made top sixteen, whatever. I'm not too bad. I mean, I didn't lose a match, and he hadn't. He he had gone. Uh, he like he had like four, three or four draws, and just, he 
didn't have enough points. And then today, I was like, how are you doing? He's like, oh, still undefeated. And I was like, cool, cool. And he's like, yeah, I realized that I didn't lose a match in Vancouver, and I haven't lost a match um, to a master since Worlds. <laughs> like, he didn't lose a match to a master without the KO until he lost to uh, Lex, Lex D'Andrea twice. I think he lost him to a Swiss and in the finals. So Ross is on quite the tear, even though it doesn't quite seem like it. And that's one thing, too, about the top eight system is that I think it's better. I think top eights are um, where you want to be. I think it makes the game more prestigious, but it also makes it so same. it's, uh, you know, it, the top 16 doesn't really carry the same weight it used to. It doesn't get reported on as much, you know. Um, I've seen a lot of people. Same. I've seen a lot of people top 16 regionals. Not really get talked about because it's a focus on top eight now, but still a really good accomplishment. Absolutely. Keyblade Warrior, sorry, Chase is just being an idiot. You didn't do anything wrong. We were wrong. teasing you. Yeah, we, we, we wanted messing. people to go watch the YouTube videos. <laughs> you just messing around. spoiled it. We banned you from the yeah. chat. But uh, never happened again. Taken care of. We're really sorry. We'll, we'll send you a severance package. No regrets. I'm not sorry. Chase is not sorry. Um, if John were to s scoop here, which I probably would if I were him, maybe? No, no. He played out to the draw, at least. But if he were, we would go to a game three. We oh, John three. won game one. Of course. I sorry. I'm. Yeah. I started talking before I um, had completely thought of what I was thinking. I'm just saying that John is like favored in a game three. But I mean, right. it's it's gonna go to game three no matter. I John. I think John's right to play it out, just to guarantee a draw, as opposed to a possibly loss. losing yeah. like a ridiculous game three. Also, keep in mind Mike Newman wasn't a car accident this morning. It's not a joke. <laughs> We have four minutes. God damn it! We have four minutes left in the round, um, just about. So, just only you know, with this this match should end. Um, Players have been playing at a fairly okay pace, but um, probably just going to see. Just it. an update on a few players that I know people are trying to uh, keep track of. Zach Dalton has yet to win a game. He is zero and uh, six. Ooh, wow. Those of you who signed up for the first. A couple of announcements happening. I love and you. Sorry, guy, I love this. Checked by people coming to the booth. Zach. People don't know their place. Uh, we asked for this booth to be atop an ivory tower within the convention center, but fortunately, it had to be on the floor with. The normies, so we're uh, talking to the powers that be to try to get this resolved, but we're as outraged as you are. Uh, last I heard, um, Puka is, I believe, X O and one or X one and one. I forget. I deleted the note on my phone, but he's still very much in it. Um, and we can get an update on his round when he finishes. Speaking last of people who aren't in it, <clears throat> John is totally bombed. And. Yeah, I mean, Rush actually, I mean, a double dark patch is could very well win him the game, but I just don't see that. Yeah. Um, it depends on Ross's hand as well. He just yeah, Ross has a lot of cards in hand. Ross like, can yeah. slash that dark guy. Ross can hydro pump that dark guy. Yeah, and he, even the double dark patch here uh, doesn't necessarily like it. Uh, it Ross could very easily respond with the black here. I'm like, he has so many cards Absolutely. in hand, and all the energy yep. just goes to this card. So oh, what I meant there is that his right. only hope is a double dark patch, but right. it is a it very puts very him back in the game. slim one. I don't even know. It puts him it. Leaves the door open just a crack before Ross just kicks it in with <laughs> all of his might. Um, to the person who just asked how game three will work, game three probably won't work. It's looking like this game's going to end right on time, but hypothetically, if there are more time left and they went to game three, um, it would just be any normal best of three, whoever won game three would win the match. But if time were called during game three and no winner, like clear six prizes deck out blah 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 winner um, occurred during the three turns then it's a draw so every game has to be completely decided within this new system that's like as concisely as I can put it so basically what we're saying is it's probably going to be a draw if Ross looks like Ross is going to win if Ross wins it'll be yeah, a draw because like, like I don't see this not ending in a draw under any circumstances yeah Which isn't horrible for either players, pl either player, but it just it get it again. I uh, sound like Maddie. Um, it just again <laughs> brings up the point that the fact that you can start the first seven rounds of a tournament without giving up a match and not be guaranteed day two of Swiss, like that is a pretty strong statement against ties. Definitely. Starting a regional five and zero, um, in the past at like 
with our old system has almost always guaranteed top cut. So right. and there'd be what seven rounds. Yeah, and even even at eight. Like you could and even at eight, that just means you need to win one more. Like right, of right. course, like yeah. So starting at five and zero. Oh, on, under the old system, that you still had to win one of your last three games, but that was just like pretty easy to do. And now these guys are five and zero, oh, and they're still scratching and clawing for a spot on day two, all because of ties. If the game is not set up and time is called, uh, there's no sudden death. Pokemon players, that is fifty minutes. You now have plus. All right, all right so time with.